everybody, this is Brian David Marshall coming to you from the Tournament Center at Pro Tour Return to Ravnica here in Seattle. And here with me is 15 and 0, Stanislav Sifka from Hi. the Czech Republic. Stanislav, how does that feel to be 15 and 0? Is that like anything you would have ever dreamed about coming to the Pro Tour? Well, life, it's like I'm still dreaming and I'm afraid that I'm going to wake up, <laughs> you know. How, yeah. how many games have you lost this weekend so uh, far? Two. Two games. Yeah. <laughs> so you're, just just to do the math, I'm, I'm not very good at math, 30 and two yeah. in games yeah, this fits. weekend. Okay, so you're playing the deck, uh, people have been calling it Second Breakfast. I like to refer to it as the artistry, formerly known as Eggs. Yeah. <laughs> and let's, let's take a look at uh, what makes this deck work. Mm -hmm. If you could, this okay. is sort of like, this is like the pistons in the engine of your deck, yeah. right? Yeah, you play like many artifacts that you can cycle for drawing another card. So Chromatic Star costs one, and yeah. then for one mana you can cycle. So you can chain these together. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Like play as many artifacts as you can, then in one turn you sacrifice all of them. So you have Chromatic Star, Star Chromatic Star, Star, Chromatic Sphere, Conjurer's Bobble, which costs one. It's free to sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's also necessary for the combo. Right, it lets you put one target card from your graveyard on the bottom of your library, draw a card. Yeah, and, and then the elsewhere flash. So that yeah. when it comes to play, draws a card, and then it's free to sacrifice, yeah. which is also pretty important. Yeah. So you play a bunch of artifacts, and then you sacrifice them, and sure. So 16 of those that all sort of draw a card for you. Let's take a look at the next package, Lotus Bloom. This, so this, all right. So we're watching a match, and we're watching the, the sort of the pregame feed, and I'm like, is is Sifka gonna keep a no land hand? Is that? Is that even possible? And of course, the thing that made it possible yeah. was two Lotus Blooms. Yeah, like if you suspend a Lotus Bloom on turn one, it's gonna go up on turn four, and it's usually allows you to kill in the same turn. And it's also mm, possible to find it with free shape. And so so for, for you, you, and X, where X equals zero, you could sacrifice a Chromantic Star, yeah, yeah. and then go get a Lotus Bloom, mm -hmm. and put it into play, so it's almost like a, Almost like a ritual where yeah, you get yeah. to go from yeah, two mana like up to three well, mana. Yeah. Um, so reshape is get you the lotus bloom. So so you have all these artifacts that draw your card when they come to play. They're all easy to sacrifice. This gives you three mana, easy to sacrifice. You can reshape it into play. How are we making this all come together? Let's take a look at the next slide. Uh, Second Sunrise, this is a card. This was always at the heart yeah. of the eggs deck. But there were only four of them, and you really Need you, you, you get really desperate as you're digging through your deck yeah. to find the next one. Yeah. You just sure. had to keep digging until you yeah. got to Magic 2013. <laughs> yeah, it was really important for the deck, yeah. So Faith's Reward, it basically does the same thing as Second yeah. Sunrise. Costs one more, one fewer yeah, white fine. mana. Um, so, so tell us how that works. Like you play a bunch of artifacts and you Give cycle us, walk it. Walk us through, tell you what, walk us through the no mana game. How did that work? Turn four, two Lotus Blooms come into play. You have no lands in play. What do you do? Like I sacrifice the both Lotus, get six mana, play some artifacts like Chromatic Star, Chromatic Sphere, draw a bunch of cards and then return it with Second Sunrise. So then so, the Lotus Blooms come back into yeah, play. Yeah, Lotus and the artifacts the as well. The Chromatic Stars come back into play. So, you like draw m more and more cards with every copy you play. You cast more and more artifacts, reshape the lotus, and getting more and more mana. Then you get to the stage that you draw a whole library. So you, you, you can actually, on turn four, like, draw your whole library. Like, actually, I did it once on turn two. <laughs> <laughs> How did you do it on turn two? Like, it was, it's very unusual. It okay. happens like once per hundred game or something like that. Okay. But I, I had played uh, Chromatic Star on turn one from Goose Quarter, and on turn two I sack fetch land, destroy the land with Goose Quarter, so I get two lands, reshape the Chromatic Star for Lotus Bloom, get back with Second Sunrise, so the lands came back as well, so I get like six mana now, and yeah, I cast my So, so go Goose Quartering your own land yeah, to get yeah. a land. Yeah. If you have fetch lands, it goes back and they well, go yeah. into the graveyard that turn, yeah. they'll all come back into play. So you get the land that you got, the extra land that you got, the land that you sacrificed, the ghost quartered land, the fetch land. Yeah, yeah. everything goes back and then you can draw. And so you can actually cards. go, you went from zero lands in the game that we watched on camera. Yeah. You went to zero lands to, I think, four lands in one turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's with fetch lands you can like yeah. find it's more It's pretty lands. exciting. So 
And then ultimately you do all that and it's, so helping you along the way, you have Serum Vision, Sleight of Hand, Gitaxian Probe to help you sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. dig through like, your deck. It's very important after a sideboard game when you are fetching for answer, like if your opponent play like some graveyard hate or you're gonna need specific cards, you, it's really helpful after board to find it, yeah, so it's right. really important. And then ultimately what you want to find is a Pyrite Spell Bomb. Yeah, yeah it's, well, usually you've got to find it. If you're, you're right, you uh, dig through your whole deck. So, so you play the Pirate Spell Bomb, you sacrifice, sacrifice it. Sacrifice and return it. You do two, sunrise, and yeah. it comes back. And then, so I've seen multiple games where your deck is just eight second yeah, sunrises, yeah, yeah. conjurers bobbling them to the bottom. Yeah. And, and then, then just, infinite leg go in. So you can just like two points at a time. Yeah, yeah every time, yeah. Um, and I think, uh, do we have a, another slide here? So we have your lands. Actually, you also have a silence in the deck. Yeah, I have silence. In One, it. two. Uh, two of them. Two silence. So that's and that's like in any combo deck. You're just. Yeah, I need to protect it. And also, it helps you like if you're gonna kill your opponent on four with Lotus, it can buy you a turn if you silence your opponent and he can cast a spell. So it's really right. important. So Ghost Quarter, we already talked about. Scalding Tarn, Misty Rainforest. Why, why do you mix them up? Why not just? Uh, since you're, you're like only... there's like possibility that someone's gonna extirpate your surgical extraction to land, and you, you can theoretically have more in hand, so or they can needle it. Or, but yeah, it's really theoretically, but it's no no reason to not mix it. Right. It's just a fr it's just free to be able to yeah, yeah, yeah. split it. Okay. And uh, and then you have some islands and planes yeah, I have on seven, top of that. Seven islands and one plane. It's okay. And then your sideboard. This card seems pretty important to me in a field full of Jund. Yeah, it's definitely true. So 35% 30, of the field is Jund, and then you're just bringing this in all the time against them? Yeah. Like, if you have the Leyline Insensitive in hand, it's really good because it stops like half of our opponents. Like, they can't spell this, this card spells, they can play Jund Charm. Right. Yeah, slaughter Jund games. Charm removes your, your you graveyard from the game. Plus graveyard, target, yeah. So, so they yeah. can't target you. Um, yeah, Bolt is unable to play. So yeah, it's like destroy half of them, half of their deck. So it's fine. So another, we see another silence over there. Uh, when are you bringing in a grape shot? Yeah, grape shot is quite interesting against Jan because in one game it happened to me that uh, my opponent slaughter game me, and he chose pirate spell bomb because he thought it's the only win condition, and I switch it for grape shot. Yeah, so it <laughs> did nothing. He yeah. didn't even get the pirate spell yeah, bomb. No, I didn't have it in, in deck. So yeah. And it's also like, it might be important if your opponent like extirpate the Lotus Bloom that you can get infinite mana for Paris Spell Bomb so you can like use double Grape Shot or something like that. Okay, now I've heard you've been a little, uh, a little tricky with the deck. I, I heard stories of you suspending a Lotus Bloom and your opponent's so focused on that Lotus Bloom. It's like, oh my gosh, his Lotus Bloom's coming into play next turn. And then you just win the turn before. Yeah, it, it sometimes happens. Yeah, like, because it's usually good against the deck, to prepare like everything when Lotus is coming, but if your hand is really good, you can go off like and surprise your opponent if he's tape out or something. Okay, so everyone wants to know. You're 15 and 0. Will you play round 16? We'll see. <laughs> Probably I will. But who knows? Would it would it be you, you said it was a dream earlier. Would it be like a dream to go 16 and 0? Would that be something you would be enormously proud of? Yeah, it would be very nice. Yeah, awesome. Well I'm gonna wish you the best of luck. Uh, signing off for Stanislav Sivka from the Tournament Center, this is Brian David Marshall.